think everyone knows about Centralia, America's most famous town that has been on fire since the 60s. Did you know that there are hundreds of known perpetual coal fires in the US, perhaps hundreds more that are just not accounted for? I may turn this into an entire series because there's so much to talk about. There's one coal fire on Earth that is 6,000 years old and could last another couple thousand years. Now, Centralia was lit on fire in the way of absolute stupidity. You see, they had a garbage problem, and the firefighters were told to destroy the garbage by lighting it on fire in a pit. The result was a fire that started in 1962 that slowly consumed the whole town. Now, people didn't just leave because it was, you know, on fire. No, many of the town people decided they wanted to stay. And around 1982, things got worse. Sinkholes started opening up in the middle of town. Now, that ground was searing. It ended up lighting houses on fire. This little boy was just playing, and he ended up falling into a sinkhole. And he would have, you know, been toasted in 300 degree Fahrenheit soil. He managed to grab onto a root and his cousin pulled him back up. But this was a big wake-up call to a lot of the people who lived there. Now, the town is officially abandoned, but there are still five people who still live there to this day. The state did try to get them out because rescue attempts are costly and it's not a great idea to attract people to the city. The remaining residents actually sued the state and won and got about $350,000 for the trouble, they can live there until their expiration, which may be sooner than later. And then the state will come in and take it. As for putting out the fire, it's not going to happen. The state did try to do it once in the 80s, except it was unseasonably cold weather and the water lines froze, so they just gave up. We will talk more about how to put these things out. You see, humanity has a problem. Around 360 million years ago, trees started growing on this planet, and there were no bacteria or fungi that knew how to break them down. So trees just piled on top of each other and eventually left coal deposits, which are really energy-rich carbon. Humanity built our society around coal, and that was really great during the Industrial Revolution because we have this really energy-rich resource. But then we left the mines. When we dug down into these resources, we introduced oxygen. There's also stuff like natural gases, which can be quite combustible in the presence of oxygen and heat. Back a hundred years ago, when many of these fires started, if there was a coal fire, you just left. Whole towns would get up and leave. Sure, a few would stay behind, but that thing is going to release stuff like mercury and other toxic gases. Now, a lot of the world is built around coal. Those cities continued, even though coal mining stopped there. If you live in the southeast like me, and I'm in North Carolina, You'll hear about the black-eyed boys and many urban legends around coal mines. Many of these places were also really hot because of geothermal activity and introducing oxygen just wasn't great either. But they light on fire randomly. Turns out we're also really not great at keeping track of them. It takes a lot of resources to track these things, and if it's not in the middle of a city, it may just be unknown, but Colorado found out they cause wildfires. And yeah, they can burn at hundreds of degrees, so it's also very dangerous for people to go in and do anything at all if you can do anything at all. For Colorado, they have seasons where it's relatively wet, forest fires just are not going to start, and then come spring, come summer, when the shrubbery dries out, they got massive wildfires. And it can cost upwards of a million dollars to put one of these things out. And it can cost upwards of a million dollars to put one of these things out. That is, of course, assuming you can put it out at all. People have tried all sorts of stuff jet engines to pump in things like CO2 gas to try to suffocate it. You can put liquid nitrogen on it, but it takes a lot of liquid nitrogen when we're talking about potentially billions of tons of coal. That's not happening. Water, not very effective. You ever try to put water on a campfire? It's going to miss hot spots. The most effective way of doing it, it's just to clear cut directly down, which is what Colorado tried to do. They were successful for two major fires, one of which was burning near Boulder, Colorado, for the last 100 years. As you can imagine, digging directly into the ground is dangerous and costly work. It's also destroying the coal vein, but I think at this point it's probably for the best that it is destroyed. Now here's a little map of the world. This is where all the major coal deposits are, everywhere. And here's the map of some of the major coal fires, just the ones that we're aware of. Yep, in the exact same locations. We as humanity are not great at keeping things not on fire. What do you think? Should I turn this into a series? Do you want to hear more? It goes so much deeper, and that's a pun.